anxiety is the biggest killer of video content the world has ever seen. It's true. Like, even I hate being on video. There's no way of getting around it. As a human race, we're not supposed to see images of ourselves everywhere. It's not natural. If you look in the mirror, I no doubt most of us, <laughs> certainly my wife does, scowl at that mirror because we don't like seeing ourselves. We should see other people. And to see ourselves a little bit unnatural, a bit unnerving, and also shines a light on all the little imperfections that we have that we're frustrated with because we see that every day. I'm here to tell you that the majority of people who are in your audience who are watching your video content don't see any of those things. They're self-imposed, self-limiting beliefs a lot of the time. That being said, anxiety fades over repetition. So the more you do something, the less anxiety you feel about it. And actually, you can, you know, if you embrace something like a philosophy like Ikigai, and you get that 1% better with each video that you do and force yourself to watch bits of the video back, you actually start to become better. And better in video translates to better in real life also. I'm not here to teach you to suck eggs. A lot of the people who I speak to who are executive coaches are phenomenally talented at assessing all this themselves. But sometimes it's refreshing just to have somebody else say it out loud. Anxiety does stop people from doing video. It does get in the way but I'm going to be crystal clear here. It not only affects you, but it affects your competition. Other people who are a good fit for the same clients you are, also, they're not doing video. And it's interesting, I find that a lot of people who are very confident public speakers, who get up on stage and deliver a keynote, who have done lots and lots of podcasts and things, when it comes to doing video for themselves, really struggle really struggle because of that anxiety that kicks in. And people think it doesn't exist because, oh, you get up on stage in front of hundreds of people, you must be really confident. Truth is, we just learn to bury it better or deal with the consequences and symptoms better. So it's still there, it's still very real. My biggest advice for you, if you're suffering from anxiety around video, is to think about, one, the good that you're doing with the video, nor the value that you're adding and think about the positive feedback that you'll get from your ideal audience for you having helped them. And that does happen a lot with video. You do get messages back saying, thank you for sharing that. I was in that same boat. I agree with you or I don't agree with you and let's have a conversation about it. And it really does add that value that I know if I'm doing video, I'm gonna get that conversation back, that, that connection with other people. And the other side of things is to just remember the long-term benefits. Video converts customers like no other medium. If you're consistent with it and you can stick with it for six to nine months or longer, then you're going to start seeing some beautiful results. And I've done this in multiple businesses, in multiple industries, and with multiple clients in industries. They all see the same things. Once they've been active for about nine to 12 months, they start to see really qualified people dropping into their inbox that they wouldn't otherwise get. And actually the quality of their business life is massively improved it does pay off. So just keep that in mind when that little voice starts telling you that actually this is a bit ick and we don't really want to do it. And I don't want to share this and I'm not an expert. And then we start to move into imposter syndrome, which is a different video. 